hello everyone today i am going to discuss about back of arm and intermuscular spaces located on the back of arm so let's begin today's session so posterior compartment or back of arm contains triceps along with anconius radial nerve and profunda brachial artery so here is the image for us to understand the attachments of triceps the triceps forms the main bulk on the posterior compartment or back of arm the long head of triceps gains its origin from infraglenoid tubercle so here is the long head of triceps gaining its origin from infraglenoid tubercle this is the glenoid cavity the tubercle above the glenoid cavity supraglenoid tubercle the tubercle which is below the glenoid cavity is infraglenoid tubercle which gives origin to long head of triceps and there are two more heads of triceps which are called as medial head and lateral head of triceps medial head arises from medial and lateral both the heads arises from the shaft of the humerus on posterior surface of shaft of humerus medial head gains its origin from the posterior surface of the shaft below the radial groove so here you can see an image where we can see the profunda brachial artery this is profunda brachial artery and the nerve with along with the profunda brachial artery is the radial nerve so here it is written radial nerve and profunda brachial artery so we can see the medial head so medial head of the triceps is the deeper muscle uh, where we can appreciate only after cutting up the lateral head of triceps so this is the medial head on the medial side here it would be medial to the spiral groove or the radial groove it gets origin then the lateral head the lateral head the uh, upper part of the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus gives origin to lateral head of triceps that is above the radial groove so above the radial groove here is the origin of lateral head of triceps and here is the medial head which is deeper medial head is the deeper most and this is the long head of triceps and insertion of all three three heads they converge and get inserted to the superior surface of olecranon process so we can see here posterior part superior surface of olecranon process gives the uh, insertion to triceps so here is an image for us to understand the radial nerve in the posterior compartment so the radial nerve supplies the triceps in the posterior compartment so the action of triceps brachii is a powerful extensor of elbow joint and the long head of supports the head of the humerus during hyper abduction of the arm so radial nerve and profunda brachial artery pass between the medial and lateral heads so here we can see this is the long head of triceps this is the lateral head these are the cut ends of lateral head and the deeper muscle is the medial head in the lower part we can also appreciate anconius and we can see the nerve which is in the posterior compartment called as the radial nerve along with the profunda brachial artery so the radial nerve it is the continuation of posterior cord of brachial plexus it is the largest branch of brachial plexus and radial nerve would be discussed separately in a separate topic but here i will just show you the radial nerve which is related to the posterior part of the shaft of the humerus in a groove which is called as spiral groove or radial groove and along with the radial nerve we can see profunda brachial artery so that is about uh, the posterior 
compartment and uh, triceps its origin insertion and we have seen its uh, even nerve supply and actions of triceps so next about the profunda brachii artery so the profunda brachii artery it is the continue uh, branch of brachial artery so the brachial artery we know it is the principal artery of arm and brachial artery is the continuation of axillary artery so the ax we imagine this is the axillary artery and this is teres major muscle beyond the lower part lower border of teres major the, uh, the axillary artery continues as brachial artery so this is the axillary artery here is the brachial artery which is the continuation of axillary artery from the lower border of teres major this is teres major muscle further the brachial artery gives rise to a very thick branch which goes to the posterior compartment called as profunda brachial it gives rise to profunda brachial artery so this is the profunda brachial artery profunda brachial artery continues with the radial nerve spirally runs spirally on the posterior aspect along with the radial nerve and terminally it divides into that it divides into anterior descending branch this is anterior descending branch and posterior descending branch descending branch it is otherwise called as radial collateral artery anterior descending is otherwise called as radial collateral artery whereas the posterior descending branch is otherwise called as middle collateral artery it is otherwise called as middle collateral artery and uh, profunda brachial artery also gives rise branches to the deltoid on its way which is called as deltoid branch and it also gives rise to a branch called as nutrient artery which supplies the humerus and also gives rise to muscular branches to supply the triceps so that is about the profunda here this profunda brachial artery further we shall continue with the intermuscular spaces intermuscular spaces are located on the posterior compartment posterior side of the arm and the shoulder and these spaces are surgically very important and uh, there are three intermuscular spaces on the posterior side one is the quadrangular space the other two are the triangular spaces which are called as upper triangular and lower triangular spaces so quadrangular space so here we can see the head of the humerus articulating with the glenoid cavity to form shoulder joint and this uh, head with the glenoid cavity is surrounded by the capsule of the shoulder joint just beneath the capsule we see a muscle called as teres minor muscle so teres minor muscle it is getting origin from the lateral border of the scapula and inserting into the uh, greater uh, tuberosity of the humerus along with the other two muscles called infraspinatus and supraspinatus muscle so this space this quadrilateral shaped space is called as quadrangular space so quadrangular space you can see it is quadrilateral in shape we'll see the boundaries in the further images and lower triangular space this is the lower triangular space and this image this one is the upper triangular space so let's see uh, each space and its contents also 
so starting with the quadrangular space so now if you see in the real image here it is this is quadrangular space so this is the quadrangular space so above it is formed by teres minor muscle along with the capsule this is the capsule of shoulder joint so superiorly it is bounded by teres minor and capsule of shoulder joint and inferiorly it is bounded by the teres major muscle we can see this bulkier muscle is the teres major So teres major muscle it is getting origin from the lower part of the lateral border of the scapula and teres major gets inserted into the intertubercular sulcus it gets inserted into the lip of the intertubercular sulcus so we can see here this is the teres major muscle and laterally it is bounded by the surgical neck of humerus we can see the neck of Humerus, which forms the lateral boundary, medial boundary, it is formed by the long head of triceps. This is long head of triceps muscle. So these are the four boundaries of quadrangular space. In the same space, we can also appreciate lower triangular and upper. In the same image, we can also appreciate lower triangular and upper triangular spaces as well. So upper triangular space is this one. Is the upper triangular space. and lower triangular space is here so upper triangular space we can see above it is bounded by teres minor below by teres major and laterally by long head of triceps and only the content we can see an artery passing through it this is circumflex humeral artery and through the quadrangular space the contents are the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery so this is the axillary nerve posterior circumflex humeral artery so those are the contents of the quadrangular space and we finished even the upper triangular space so here we would discuss further with the lower triangular space so lower triangular space is this space so we can see this is the upper triangular and this is quadrangular space so lower triangular space uh, above it is bounded by teres major i can see i think you hope you can guess it now teres major muscle and below it is uh, sorry laterally it is bounded by the shaft of humerus that is the radial groove or shaft of the humerus and medially it is bounded by long head of triceps this is of triceps and we can see a nerve and artery passing through it that is the radial nerve this thick nerve is the radial nerve and artery i hope you all know it it is profunda brachial artery so these are the contents of lower triangular space so again we can revise all the spaces on the back of arm or back of shoulder or posterior aspect of shoulder these are intermuscular spaces which are clinically very important surgically very important that is the reason you should know them so the quadrangular space here we can see the quadrangular space now you can tell the boundary superiorly it is bounded by teres minor and capsule of shoulder joint inferiorly it is bounded by teres major we can see this is teres major and medially it is bounded by long head of triceps laterally it is bounded by surgical neck of humerus this is the surgical neck of humerus around which we can see the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery winding round the surgical neck of humerus so axillary nerve 
and posterior circumflex humeral artery and we can also appreciate a nerve going towards the teres minor and supplying forming the pseudoganglion that is the branch of axillary nerve so axillary nerve supplies the deltoid muscle and it also supplies teres minor muscle on its way to teres minor muscle the branch forms a pseudoganglion so we can appreciate a pseudoganglion here this is a is upper triangular upper triangular space below it is bounded by teres major above it is bounded by teres minor laterally it is bounded by long head of triceps lower triangular space lower triangular space it is bounded laterally by the shaft of humerus medially by the long head of triceps and above by the teres or superiorly by the teres major muscle and contents of lower triangular space it contains radial nerve and profunda brachial artery contents of upper triangular space it contains circumflex scapular artery because it is winding round the body of the scapula so it is called circumflex scapular artery so this completes the posterior compartment of arm and also the intermuscular spaces on the back of arm radial nerve we would discuss later in a separate topic thank you